Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this short game to come video, I propose that we discuss the Intel Core i3 7350K. Now, it's fair to say that the KB Lake series of chips is not exactly the most interesting of technology to discuss in general. Sure, it is quite nice that we're getting a successor to Skylake, and it does definitely bring some improvements, primarily clock speed improvements, and naturally some power saving ones as well. Power saving isn't super as important in the desktop, but still, it's nice to have. But with most of Intel's thunder being lost against uh, AMD Zen, it's very easy to overlook possibly the most exciting chip out of all of the, the uh, KB Lake series, for the desktop anyway, and that would be the i3-7350K. Now, the important part of that name, of course, is the K, and it denotes the first time that Intel have allowed a i3 chip to be multiplayer unlocked. Now, there have been previous chips where you could certainly overclock them via the FSB, but obviously there are limitations around that. Intel have equipped the chip with 4 megabytes of level 3 cache, but not only is it multiplayer unlocked, you also get hyper-threading, and it also comes out of the box at a pretty nice speed already, 4.2 gigahertz. What does that mean in terms of performance? Well, it scores a single core performance of 5,148. That would be in Geekbench 3, I'm sorry, Geekbench 4. And in terms of multi-core score, you're looking at a shade over 10,000, once again in the same benchmark. Now, to put this into perspective, because obviously context is important, if you were to put it against the i5-6400, that chip scores just over 3600 in single thread, while even the i7-4770K, obviously depending on the clock speed you're pushing in the chips, can score around 11 to 12,000. So overall, this chip, given once again the fact that it's going to be pretty cheap on launch, to put it into context, the pricing for this chip is around 170 to 180 US dollars. I say around because obviously there might be a bit of, be a bit of price gouging, excuse me. To put this into further perspective, the i5-7600K is expected to, to slot in at around the same price as what we're currently seeing Skylake CPUs and therefore that chip is going to be at around the 240 for the K model. So there's roughly $60 to maybe $70 depending on your retailer difference between the two chips. Now it is true that the i5-7600K does indeed net you an extra 2 megabytes of cache and it's also true that there are of course 4 physical cores rather than 2 physical cores with hyper threading but, and it's a big but, the actual physical clock speed of the chips are the same. Really this comes down to what the chips can actually get in terms of the clock speed and what your budget is. Basically this chip could be excellent for folks who just want a very cheap system and pairing it up with a mid-range graphics card. An equivalent graphics card now would be like the 470, the 480, maybe the 1050, 1050 time, maybe the 1060, something along those lines. And it would be a great secondary system or for folks on, once again, a low budget. There are certainly other options, like for example, there's probably going to be a lot of processors from the Skylake range which go on eBay so you can certainly jump on one of those if you so desire but for those wanting to buy a new CPU this could well be the perfect option. Now the only spanner in the works and you can probably guess what I'm gonna say here is Zen. It's not that this processor is bad um, it's not the single thread performance is really impressive but for folks with a lower budget it's possible Zen for example the SR5s which we believe and I really stress the word believe to be um, the six core models could well be just a better price versus what you're getting even the SR3s which supposedly will offer four cores might also be a very nice process indeed the SR7s, to give you some 
uh, inkling of what you're expected to pay here given earlier rumors is around the 300 US dollar mark. Now there are once again supposedly going to be black editions of these chips. Now just to clarify the black editions of Zen are not like special versions which you can overclock. All Zen CPUs can overclock but the black editions come with higher clock speeds as a standard and the second thing they do is also basically cherry pick the samples so that you're I wouldn't say guaranteed because nothing's ever guaranteed with overclocking but you're much more likely to be able to get a higher clock speed without pushing the equivalent of like a nuclear furnace through the processor in terms of voltages. The reason I bring that up is for individuals who want to jump on a CPU if the Zen SR3s or SR5s are comparatively priced that could scupper the i3-7350, but if not, if Intel have a bit of a lead on AMD, because from the rumors, once again, the SR7 is going to be the chip which AMD are focusing on. In other words, it wants to get the high-end CPUs and the high-end motherboards out first. Basically, I'm assuming the, the idea here is to wow the you know, the tech enthusiasts, the high-end gamers, the review websites, get those really interested, and then naturally that trickles down to the rest of the, um, well, rest of the, rest of the SKU line. And it also makes a lot of sense as well, because by that point, any processors which basically fail the tests, for example, they, they don't run at a certain clock speed or a certain number of CPU cores is damaged or disabled, they can simply bin those chips and sell them at a lower price which will make things quite interesting I'm making once again an assumption but from our knowledge of Zen it appears it's built in modules so that's four cores per module so one would make the assumption that if the SR5s are built with six cores that would mean once again in theory that if one or two of those cores are damaged that they can speed bin an SR7 to an SR5 and therefore that's how they can start building up their inventory. With that all said, however, I think the i3-7350 is going to be a really nice chip, and I do applaud Intel for their decision to actually make this an overclockable processor, and I've always wondered why they've not done that. I've always made the guess that they just didn't want to basically cut into their bottom line, which they were getting from the i5s, for many, the i5, let's say the 2500K, for example, has always been a really nice buy. The 4670K, same thing, and you get the idea here. It's been that chip where if you don't need those additional threads, especially if you're primarily gaming, especially back when DirectX 11 was really the thing, you could make a very compelling argument that there was not really a need to go the i7 route. Now things are starting to change of course, as more as multi-threading is becoming more uh, popular with games developers. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Uh, normal things, like, subscribe, comment. This is also an article, by the way. You can find it linked in the video description. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.